It's about nerd box. All right. Yeah. But uh, what's up, people? Welcome to another episode of Horror with Sir Sturdy. Backpacking with Sturdy, episode 501. We're in Korea this time. South Korea, to be exact. I saw the devil. And this is a Seoul, South Korea. This movie was released on August 12th, 2010. So just to be a little more precise with it, I guess. And uh, a famous dish there is fermented vegetables. I did Again, I ordered some Korean food. I forgot to get the thingies that I up, got up ordered and stuff. The food was great, though. But my wife had me try some of this stuff, and I wasn't a fan. Yeah, I tried the fermented shit. Kimchi? I can't, man. Kimchi is what it's called, by the way. Oh, I no. love the kimchi. I no. tried. I wish my stomach just... would treat me better, but I could live off kimchi. I. It's too. It's too sour. Too bitter. It's, I can't yeah, do it. That just. But I can't take sauerkraut. Like sauerkraut frightens the hell out of me. But and you I know love it's kimchi. You know, and you know it's funny. I'm the op. Like sauerkraut, I can do uh, like a little bit on a burger, a mm. little bit. On, like, I don't like none. Kielbasa, but by itself, no. That's mm. just that's too much. Mm. Now, have any of you had any of their street pancakes? What is it? A uh, hot dog? No. Oh, those are so no. good. Mm. Are they oh. sweet? Yes, they can be sweet. They can be savory. You can do a little bit of everything with them. Uh, ooh, oh, okay. Here and I throw a little bit of the peanuts in there and pecans and stuff like mm. that. That's not really good, but you can throw fruit in there. You can just go straight dough. It's really good. Nice. nice. That Very sounds nice. Yeah. So we're here again, and Dave, I'm gonna let you kick it off. I know you ha- are another content creator on here. So can you please tell people where you're from and what you do? Sure. Hello, everybody. This is Dave from Nerdbox. It's a channel that covers all things horror. We mainly focus on Scream and Terrifier. We're the unofficial Terrifier channel, so we have about 30 videos on there. Behind the scenes, Easter eggs, theory videos, all of that for Terrifier and Scream as well. And uh, pretty soon will be the unofficial channel for Stream, which is coming out August 21st. It's a survival horror film. So everybody wants to check that out, definitely. It's from the creators of Terrifier 2 and Terrifier 1. But over on our channel right now, we're doing 1,000 Ways to Die in a Horror Movie. So it's a list show. Nice. We're doing over 10 crazy deaths every week. That's awesome. You know, Who's been yeah. who's been killed in the face? You know, stabbed to death with uh, paper clips. You know, we're gonna go over that and Killer mm-hmm. Donuts and all these other cool things. But oh, Killer yeah, Donuts, a lot of cool shows on there. Fun. Killer Donuts was a fun, fun movie. I never seen it. It's fun. <laughs> the, the, I'll tell you what though that that movie cover is so. I seen the cover. I seen the cover. Dope. For, forget it. it. It's fun with dough, but if you want to laugh at something, watch the German film Killer Condom. It's so much oh better. Oh my than god! I thought shit. that was fake. No, it's real. No, it's H. Real. R. Geiger actually designed the main condom monsters, Mister Xenomorph. Wow! I think I, I, I thought, know, I I thought it was fake, man. <laughs> Troma released it originally in the United oh States, gosh. at least. Holy shit! I watch I it saw that movie. If not, I gotta oh. see it again. If not, I definitely yeah. gotta see that again. But links are in the description, so make sure you guys check out the links. I'll give Trevor a moment at some point in the show as well to talk about where he's from and his show and all that good stuff. Yeah. But I saw the devil, gentlemen. I saw the devil. I'm so happy that we're doing this backpacking thing, this journey, these through these foreign films, because so far we haven't had anything bad. At all. Well, I'm a huge uh, the, um, horror and horror. What did we do? We did India two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Last week, Japan. Now, Korea. And last week was with Itchy the Killer. That shit. Oh, oh my wild. gosh. I like, love that wild. wild movie. Watching these two films back to back, just seeing like the violence. Actually, even the stories, because a lot of the same stuff did happen as far as the, you know, the graping, which we say grape instead of the R word. And all that other craziness to it and the violence in it might not have been as violent. Chaos was good. What's up? Appreciate you popping in here, homie. And this was this was on another level just because of the emotional part of it. And then you're just like, holy shit. I didn't I wasn't sure where this was going at mm. first. Mm-mm, neither. Until you see that all the connections tying in. Cause it starts off again, just like into the killer. It starts off wild. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. 
we're like 10 minutes into the movie and this guy is already killing somebody what the fuck what yeah. the fuck fucking and you said begging for yeah. begging for her life yeah literally i'm pregnant mm-hmm. so she said that i'm pregnant he was like chop yep. <laughs> he was he like i don't give a fuck he did not yeah, I think it's one of those rare serial killer movies that's very close to reality. You know, it's not too Hollywood, it's not too horror, but it's yeah. like it's the closest to what would be happening in real life. So that leaves that mm-hmm. nasty feeling with you when you're watching it and exploring the movie, especially like you said with the opening kill. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we want to talk about the ending because usually with these kind of shows, people have seen the movie, but the oh, ending yeah. is so perfect. Yes, uh, in this film, oh my God, uh, I yeah. agree with you 100%. Dave, this is one of the oh better God, serial yes. killer movies, and I mean, uh, and we all have list Henry, uh, Manhunter, whatever. Mm-hmm. But as far as getting into the psychological aspect of becoming a monster, it's you know, who saw the devil? You know, mm-hmm. if it was the main character, um. You know, he has to to do what he wants to do. He learns quickly that he has to become a monster, and there are major responsibilities that come with that and loss. Um, one little thing that I thought was really, really cool about this movie is this is the first serial killer movie uh, that I can remember there being the actual eating of human flesh and it actually brings up within the discussion that the mm-hmm. other serial killer is suffering from wendingo or coro psychosis which actually te- could come from the consuming of brains or human flesh i've never mm-hmm. actually seen that portrayed well in a film before and this mm-hmm. one does it yeah it mm-hmm. does yeah it does and uh, talk about just yes what's up, joe what's good joe how's it going man hope all is well Hit me so up about also, tomorrow, by the way. Hit me up about tomorrow, by the way, Joe. So a part I like about this that I've never seen before either. So the the main cop guy who's so, yeah. looking for who's looking for this main uh, serial killer killed his wife. Yep. When he finds him, I'm like, he found him already. I'm like, what the fuck kind of movie is this? This is going to be quick. No, they did something I did not expect. He beat the shit out of him, heals him. Drops him off, hunts him down again, beats the shit out of him, heals him again. Yeah. He is torturing this guy to try to break him. And let's 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 leave it here just because of mm-hmm. the way that the way just because of the way it turns. Like, yes, you could say, cool, he's whooping his ass, he's doing what he's supposed he's doing but what he should a, do, in my opinion. Awesome. But it's but I feel like the cat and mouse part. Obviously, you see where it bites him in the ass because then he goes and kills mm-hmm. his, well, his fiance's parents mm-hmm. and all this shit. And her sister, was it her sister, right? Mm-hmm. The sister, yeah. They're, and they're, with yeah. that, they're just, basically making each other cat. more of a monster doing this. Just from the whole cat and mouse game he was playing, which I get the whole destroying him, you know what I mean, physically and mentally, because he really was. He really was breaking this dude down. To the point to where he knew nothing of like how the hell does he keep finding me until yeah you know, he, he was going crazy yeah. he was going mad he didn't he understand nuts. how and yep. I feel that was, that I feel like that cat and mouse game should have ended a, it should have ended a little sooner mm-hmm. or I would have just trapped him somewhere just just got him somewhere tie, whatever the same way he did with these people had him chained up and just whooped his ass every single day see that would have been too oh. easy though. Yeah, true. Because the guy he would he would have expected it every day. Oh, he's back to whoop my ass. But when Sorry, he's you know. healed yeah, and that is true. left in a ditch and he wakes up like where the fuck am I in the middle of nowhere? It's all healed with a cast on limping around the streets. Yeah. But then an hour later, this guy just busts through a door. He's like, How the fuck you know what I'm here? And just beats the shit out of him, get with a fire <laughs> Again. hydrant. Again. <laughs> and psychological torture. That's what it is. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, it also, I mean, one of the great things about horror movies, especially Uh-oh. you find it a lot in foreign horror films, is genres, subgenres of horror. So, where this is an this is a, mm-hmm. at the time, 2010, this was a very inventive take on the revenge film that didn't pull from Death Wish. It pulled from a much grittier place. 
uh, a mm -hmm. much more emotional one. And I think it is also has to be on that like top 10 list, if not top five list of best revenge films. They, oh, yeah, I agree. Oh, this, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the revenge that is so amazing about this, like you mentioned earlier, James, is how, you know, you have, um, all right, I don't remember how to pronounce either one of their names. So the serial killer. Uh, Chi Moon Sik, who was an old boy. Him. Yep. Uh, Jean Kung Kool. Jean we'll Kung Kool. We'll just call him Jean or kill him. Jean. Okay, Jean. Old Jean boy. and uh, him. So, he's. Yep. That dude right there is a is just an animal. He's just an mm -hmm. animal. But anyways, in the beginning, how he kills the one dude's fiance and she's pregnant, so he kills her unborn their unborn child, mm -hmm. and then how it ends with. Agent Kim, not necessarily killing him because he didn't kill him, but he set it all up, kind of like a saw thing. If you think about it like that, yeah. just like saw, like a trick. Well, similar because he, well, he, he, he couldn't, he he couldn't wanted, get out of his trap. Yeah, he wanted his family to see him die. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Like having him hold that shit with his teeth, fucking his crazy. Family oh. opening the fucking door to see his head get cut off. Mm. Listen, his fucking son. Dad. So. I'm watching this movie with my wife, right? At the end, she's over here. That's that's perfect revenge. Right? She's that's like, yeah, kill revenge. that motherfucker. Kill this, but, it, but I feel like it it is in the sense of like, listen, you took everything from me. So now I'm not going to do the same. I'm not going to harm your family at all. Not physically, but I'm going to oh, mentally fuck them up. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> But you they're, they're but, playing but two different time, uh, war uh, warfares. One was fucking can also, mental and one physical. I mean, you could also say at the same time, though, because this dude was a serial everything. The killer, the grape, all that shit. Mm -hmm. So it was like, he did he did what needed to be done to that guy, because it's one of those things where it's like, if he slipped, if he, you know, say you arrest him, and he slips through the cracks and somehow he gets out, he's going to do that shit again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So... But oh, he, uh, he kept he stayed active in the film, so that's one of the unique things yeah. too. Is he's mm -hmm. kept mm -hmm. he kept doing and seeking out people to kill on his own anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's True. one. Oh, thing speaking of that, can movie. we go real quick and call this that guy a hero? In one week, this guy found four fucking major serial killers on that fucking police board, and he took them all out until he found the main one that killed his wife. <laughs> but at what cost? Uh, you're right. What caused? Why he fucking? Oh, yeah. You, thing. You, 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 yeah. You can't call him a hero. I mean, yeah, he it's like, it's more like a. It's Deadpool. very important to understand that <laughs> he has to become the monster. And if we're talking about the ending, one of the great things the director Kim Ji Woon was able to do at the end is, uh, I had seen this film years ago, but I knew there was an ending similar to that. But I'm watching it, and I'm like, wait. Do other people live here? And I'm going, oh shit. Oh yep. shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. what is it? What is the one thing that he could do to win? And yep. he did it. And you see, as opposed to him walking off into the sunset, he falls apart because he oh, knows right. now he is worse than what he was trying to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. the, the, like many Korean films, there's so many reasons for it. Like uh, even the Korean soap operas are very emotional, and you know that's what makes Korean film, I especially I horror, I think so much better because yep. it is more brutal in a quieter way, and that's what makes it worse. More mm -hmm. intensity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, takes yeah. you down that path, or it makes you question yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh hell yeah! Also, I like how the fucking the main character, where the guy's like, "I'm going to win this." I just killed the chief and your your sister in law. Basically, I'm gonna go turn myself in. That guy is like, "No, you're not." He <laughs> fucking kidnaps him right in front of all the of the whole police force. Yo, mm -hmm. when he <laughs> he's just sitting here waiting, 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 puts his vehicle in reverse, rips the door off. Gets this dude just takes all, and I'm just like, wow. And looks like crazy. just real quick, because I want to talk about the part Trevor was talking about a minute ago with him. You know how he breaks down after all that happens. Uh -oh. One part I like, one part I loved about that that whole entire scene is after he's leaving, he puts his headphones in, and he's just walking up the street. 
and you see the car pull up, you see the cab pull up and stop. And like you're saying, like, oh shit, other people do live there. Gets out the car, all this stuff. And you kind of just, and I, I like how the camera didn't like really focus on it too much. It really had him, but it, it, it made sure you seen it, but it didn't zoom in on it or really focus in on it. It didn't blur it out either, but it didn't make it the main thing. It made it made it kind of like in the in the distance, important in the distance, but him is like the main thing. But you knew mm-hmm. who it was. Yeah. yeah. And then once it goes in, once it goes inside, yo, and all that other shit, they're pulling on the door. You see the rope just coming from his teeth. I'm just like, I hope How he's fighting it so hard. He's like, yeah. Yes. He's just, mm-hmm. I was like, damn, man. And then boop, the door opens. And I'm just like, yes. Yes, just oh my gosh, that it was just a, it worked so well because it. This is one of those movies where I enjoyed the acting, and I enjoyed how like, I use the main character Kim for example. He showed the emotion, like you've seen the pain throughout the movie, you've seen like the anger that was carrying mm-hmm. him through all this, and then after everything was done, he finally got to break down and grieve. And he broke down way more than he thought he would because he lost a hell of a lot more besides his wife and his child, but also his in-laws, well, his future, you know, future in-laws and all that stuff as well. And it's just like, and then he lost himself. Lost himself. Out of all that, he lost himself. Prison. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you're There's saying, no job now, nothing. He just wanted, he just wanted his revenge on the one guy, and just, you know. But it's, it's like. Uh, what would anybody else do in, in that situation in a situation like that? Because everybody says, "Oh, do the law, this, that, and the third. But it's like, yeah, but these type of people always get back out. Then what? Mm-hmm. No, I get it. No, I would have no. the anger to kill him if I could find him. But I wouldn't yeah. have the idea of putting a All thing down his throat and chipping him and fucking hunting him down every day, whooping <laughs> his ass. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be a quick done and over. You killed yeah. my fucking wife, so I'm going to kill you. Type shit. Uh but it was fucking crazy when they added that, man. I never seen mm-hmm. that before. I was like, this fucking is insane. So my insane. wife came in. I was in a this is I was at the last portion of it when he was turning himself in. When he killed the uh when he attacked a girl, raped her, and he was going to the police all they're all like he's getting out of the car, limping, and he has a knife in it, and he's just like waving it. Helicopters and shit. My wife walks in, she goes. What are you watching? And she goes, and what the fuck happened to that guy? <laughs> so I had to pause it and I go, there's a reason why he looks like that. So let me fill you in really quick. And I told her, she goes, what the fuck? She goes, <laughs> that she sat down and watched the rest and that she seen the end part. She goes, oh my God. She seen it. She goes, for one, yeah, he deserved it. But oh my fucking God. They set it up where his family comes and yes. fucking they open the door. Mm-hmm. Like that. <laughs> all like, you needed the at the end. Find these movies. <laughs> all you needed at the end is is a clip of that, and then the one dude going emotional damage right it's after that. Well, I mean, okay, so there's there's the if you want to apply the the old kind of plot device is, you know, if that were to continue by his son, who's already dealing with the fact that he is an absent father completely, Mm -hmm. now sees this, if you want to go cliched. But what made this ending so really beautiful for me, and I know everybody can can deal with it to an extent, like, you know, I don't know, say if you, you, you're you having such a horrible month and you're like, I'm going to go out and I'm, you know, going to order this and, you know, it shows up and you have two seconds and the down hits you. So take that little down and imagine what the 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 special agent, the the feelings he was having on that road. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh! I mean, he it, it, imagine it. You know the, the 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 yeah. To yeah, it's unbelievable because you know he ended up getting caught in a game, and that's mm-hmm. where it gets really crazy in this film. And that's where that second serial killer uh, becomes very important. And you start seeing that there's a relationship with um, the main serial killer, killer uh, to younger serial killers, almost as a mentor, and there's a mm-hmm. respect. But he doesn't like step on his de- well, it wasn't his deathbed, but it became his deathbed when he is approached by um, Oh uh, Sun Yun, 
and mm -hmm. Sun Yun's there to get information. He gives him the information, and yeah. you know, he implies some things that made him even darker because he's already consuming flesh because he can't. And what he says about women or victims, it can be mm -hmm. interpreted in various ways. So he is continuing the game. Mm -hmm. He knows from his mentor what he would do. And instead of protecting, he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to, guess what? Have fun. He's enjoying it now. Very, very, very end that the main serial killer, well, I'll just call old boy because it's the same actor, um, really understands that, yeah. The last potential thing you see is one huge thing that you've forgotten in life. That is probably the ultimate pain. So he succeeded, yeah. but, you know, way too many casualties in the long run. Uh, something yeah, else that got me, I was curious to ask you guys, but I, I, I know, I, so the, the director, Kim ji Yoon, uh, did a movie called The Good, The Bad, and The Weird, and also did this wonderful action film called The Bittersweet Life. I also did Tales of Two Sisters. And watching this, one thing that bothered me at first was the, um, the inclusion of action and things of that nature. I mean, it's got some amazing, like, martial arts scenes. Mm -hmm. So this director has done this before with this same actor. Uh, and it's really only brought up once, but at the very beginning it explains he's a, a special agent for South Korea. And if you miss that, it doesn't, but for necessity of film, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. just, it makes this, you know, such a creepy, uh, dank, dark film, but it, it's an action film too. And it's a damn yeah. good film. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hey. Hello. Back. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, I guess I can dive into our ratings real quick, and then I'll spin the wheel, and we'll dive more into the movie. But uh, I'll kick it off with you, James. I'm going to give this one a nine. Ooh. Ooh. Because this is my favorite revenge and serial killer movie, I think, as of right now. That's fair. How about you, uh, Trevor? I'll give it a nine. I want to give it... I'll actually, I'll go out on a limb on this one. 9.5. 9.5. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this is a Dave, classic of the Korean genre. All right. We going out of 10? So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm different than everybody on here. I do my ratings from a negative 10 to a positive 10 for the for a movie called Blood Lake. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but that's done some things to my rating. It did change my rating system forever, so. But Change these guys do classic one shot on video, yeah. I think these guys do zero to ten or one to ten. Yeah, zero I to do 10. zero to ten. All right, so it's got it's got a little bit of everything. It's got its suspense. It's got revenge. It's gonna make you think afterwards. It's gonna stick with you. So I, I'm right there with you, Trevor. I'm going nine point five. It's almost perfect. You know, as mm -hmm. James said, when you look at the revenge, there's a couple of revenge stories that are out there in Asia that are a little bit better than this. So that's where mm -hmm. I'm going. Nine point five, near perfect film. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with a nine as well because it, it is an awesome film. I mean, again, I, I love revenge films where it's like that evil being, whatever it is, because whatever entity it is, because whatever type of movie you're watching, gets what they asked for in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's shit, you, you get what you deserve, you get what you ask for, and they got what they asked for. But the tough part about it is like the mental anguish that it puts the main guy through well with this one what it put kim through and you see it i mean you 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 get it i mean just from the beginning but then you see mm -hmm. it at the very end of the movie where you really see his emotions and he just breaks down like he's not he's no longer like stone like stone face so to speak cuz you did see tears throughout the movie here and there but now mm -hmm. he's not he's just like i can finally just fucking let go and release i lost i literally lost everything including my mind but this guy is gone i don't care about anything anymore there's really nothing that, i have nothing to live for i have nothing to care about and he just 
breaks down and you're just like, holy shit. Yeah. The distraction's gone, right? So you put all of that on the side and focused on getting the job done. And then Mm -hmm. when that's all said and done, he has to deal with the reality that he's in and what he's left with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And it, and I like how they didn't make it an easy revenge movie too. Like I like how they made it where everything that the main character did, there was a consequence. Yeah. Like the end, like the chief and, uh, the sister-in-law getting hurt and everything. So, I mean, they got more than hurt. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I don't want to use the certain words. <laughs> oh, dude, they're, they're know, there no more. Great, they're they're, they're great there man. no more. But, uh, well, the, the chief did squeeze his hand. He was getting pulled to the ambulance. Did they actually officially say he died? <sighs> it is never official. Now the girl was wrapped in a was, blanket and yeah, like just on killed. the subway, she was killed. She was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, rigor mortis. Um, yeah. One thing I can say about this guy is, you know, he makes the suffering that Will Graham went under by Lecter look like nothing. As far as the how long it's going to get him to fix up. Ooh. Uh, I've always yeah, heard right. a reason to watch this. Got a reason now. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, of course. Of course. Is this one Taiwanese? Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna look into that in a mm. shortly though. Cool. But I do have a question for you, gentlemen. Y'all. So would you rather over here? Would you rather have the investigation st- skills of Agent Kim? Or the survival instincts of the killer, Zhang. I'll go for it. I I am a a business analyst, business architect, so I'm Mm -hmm. going with those analyst skills of Kim. James? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, see, I'll go. I think think the smart way, I think I'll go with Kim just because you can use it as uh, like a career type thing because like what's the chances like look, there's i understand the survival but unless you're doing something that you need surviving like when are you going to use all those skills it'll be in your back pocket but you'll be just chilling on your couch every day normally <laughs> unless someone's going to come and hunt you down every fucking day and beat the shit out of you <laughs> I mean, but but but, but, but it, it doesn't even have to be that serious so just having those skills to that level it could just be just as simple as someone who just enjoys the outdoors and you just have these yeah, skills and instincts to where you can also say for someone who likes working in the wilderness, there's someone who's oh, what the fuck. And technically, he don't shit. really have survivor skills. The cop healed them. He True. didn't heal himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, but, but he did have killer instincts. He was so. playing with his prey. You know? Yeah. Speaking of fucking, we gotta talk about the injuries really quick. The one that fucking I was like, even I was like, ooh, is when he fucking took out the Achilles. Oh, that, those are always great it movies. was slow. It, it was you seen him twist and you could see him yanking and just burst it out. The knife. Oh man. I was now like, God, it can be damn. worse than getting rammed in the balls. Yeah. Oh it, 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 we, we do, we've all known somebody who did something and it is horrible. Yeah, I was like, how is he standing place. up after that? I understand they wrapped him, put a cast on him and everything. But come on, that must hurt so bad. He's There's no psychopath. way you're still putting weight on that. Oh man, he's he nuts. says he doesn't feel pain. Remember, you're that right. He end. does he say that says, I don't feel pain. He says, I don't he feel is anything. a right. traditional psychopath in many, many that's ways. That's true. Mm-hmm. I don't feel pain. That's a bunch of but bullshit. that shit was crazy, though. That's a good Pretty question, though. Me, what'd you choose? Pretty damn painful to me. Me, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say the killer instinct. Why not? Because again, I don't I don't think of it as survival instincts and killer instincts. I don't necessarily think of it as violence tonight. It could just be like that, just maybe just having that in not even instinct, but maybe just like that killer, like I'm getting this fucking job done no matter what. And so into right. that to where it does to where you do have those skills if it has if it goes there, but there's a, but you could also like tie it back or put it, focus it into something else, is the way I'm portraying that or taking mm-hmm. that. Did you answer this one, Trevor? No, and I'm just trying to think because if you're just talking about the skills, 
uh, the abilities of the special agent and also fiance of the first kill, uh, they are the most pragmatic in life. But if you're looking at them as how they use them as characters, it's like setting two things of Pringles out and one's called shit and one's called ass. <laughs> I mean, it's either you, you are a complete sociopath sadist who cares about nothing, or you have so much guilt based on literally just following the same instincts as the person you're following. I wouldn't want to be either of those people by any stretch of imagination. <laughs> but I do say, I do say that at least, you know, um, the character that, uh, Oh, um, Lee Bong Hoon plays the the agent. He's been trained well. I mean, so he he's got a Fair. lot of marketable talents. Uh, unfortunately, he well, for our enjoyment, he did them. <laughs> but uh, if he was <laughs> real, yeah, he's he's screwed. <laughs> yeah, he is screwed. But hey. <laughs> 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 he oh my gosh i just i just can't believe because it just so many the way this movie works like just again the catch and release catch and release catch and release and mm -hmm. i mean the, the part where he goes up to the house to the last house he goes to with the two guys and all them dogs and shit and even the guy is like yo how the hell did you get in here so quietly like how the fuck did you do <laughs> i have dog vicious dogs out there yeah you just suck your little ass in here quietly nobody heard shit you fucking turn my music off, you unchain the girl, and then turn around and boom, here you are. But his brain is basically jelly from eating human flesh, too. True. Put that out there. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's that's crazy too, where the fucking mm -hmm. the main killer had to put him in check. He was because he called him crazy. Because he was like, You're fucking crazy that because that you're eating the human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was like, and the guy just went, What did you just call me? Like he was about to lose it, but mm -hmm. then the one was like, "Do you know who the fuck I am?" Basically, and he was like, "Oh, I, I yeah, I must be crazy." He <laughs> starts laughing, like mm -hmm. he got checked, got got uh, shit into uh, in order. He's like, "Oh fuck, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. I can't fuck with you. You're like you're like the mentor. You're like mm -hmm. you taught yeah. us all." I mean, <laughs> that character all. is gross in many many ways, but oh, they're yeah. very important because so. You know, the, the special agent out of hate and anger and despair is breaking the rules in an area of hierarchy. It puts not a lot, but also puts a little bit of information that even among killers, there can be hierarchies. So you've got these both going at the same time. And it's the film is really wonderful on like a, a doppelganger theory of, you know, us having another person, potentially that person if they find us would kill us but this is like a gradual doppelganger situation where they become more and more alike until pfft. yeah and that that's that's another reason why i love this movie this and you said you've seen this before right trevor a few times i saw it a couple times when it first came out but that was I, this is my second around time 2011 or so oh, my wow. first time so seeing it, was, it, it was i just seen the cover to me. yeah yeah I what just you clicked the cover because I, I the first time I seen it, this is the second time. The first time I seen it, I clicked the cover because it said I saw the devil. I thought it was a paranormal movie. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. then I started so I started going into it and I was like, wait, what the fuck is this? It's not paranormal. But then I was mm -hmm. just hooked. I was like, holy shit. I was like, yeah, well, I'm I, glad I picked. I'm glad I clicked on this one. <laughs> yeah, I avoided it for a long time because I heard such great things about it and I didn't want to go into it expecting a lot disappointed by it so the first time i actually watched it was mm. two years ago i was like oh my god it is as good as everybody said nice mm -hmm. and for actually, me, no. oh, for, sorry, me sorry. For, for me it's a first time watch and an amazing first time watch i'll definitely say that it was just i was just like holy shit damn this is fucking awesome this is this is you you this is something to get excited about. This is something to get like holy shit. Yes, yes, give me more, give me more. Good story, great action, great visual, like just everything about this movie I enjoyed for the most part. Yeah, I have to say it's probably on a lot of top 10 lists mm -hmm. that are out mm -hmm. there. It's got to be. Yeah. It should be. 
Sturdy, if you don't mind, I actually have a question for Dave. It's for any of you guys. But one of the things that really caught me in this movie is something that connects it to another favorite that we've talked about. And you do the list of kills. Mm -hmm. I can't think of two movies that do extraordinarily intense uh, greenhouse scenes versus hot tension in this film. Mm -hmm. They were. Uh, just, I've, I've never seen it done in another one. The the only greenhouse scene that I've come across recently, and, and it's not even close to this, is in Slugs, where there's a okay, yeah. explosion. Mm, um, yep. In intense scenes like this, I'm going to have to go with the Clove Hitch Killer, where you okay. have that scene in the bedroom where it's as intense, where you finds the woman mm -hmm. in that bedroom, and then you have the sun outside to go in or not. So I think there was a lot of. Well, the what killer? Which killer? Okay, I'll look that up. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I would put that almost on the level of this here. So EK killer, oh, wow. and so they renamed it. To oh, killer. we have my interest double fold now. Yeah. So um, with that is it's a great, great acting. I think. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. and he is the killer. It's probably. And just the tension that's the entire film because he's retired, and then his son stumbles ac across his uh, his trophies, and he burns the trophies, and that kicks off that itch again. He's like, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta go and start a new trophy collection." Oh shit! Ooh. Okay. Wow. Ah, another one. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what I got. Oh, go ahead, Trevor. I did want to bring up one thing, um, just talking a little bit more about Korean horror. And we've talked about this kind of stuff when if Sturdy and I did the the massive Godzilla uh, <laughs> marathon with Mick. And no matter how childish those films got, they still had an element of, you know, fear of the nuclear bomb and things of this nature. Now, Korean film tends to be um, very tense uh mm -hmm. feeling oriented there's a lot of fear in just yes. i mean it doesn't have to be i mean uh look at parasite and things like that but you got to remember you're dealing with a very you know a country that is almost on the level of japan on how far ahead it is but it lives daily with the understanding that they are literally the only place that north korea could hit a button and they're gone they wake yep. up every day with that. So I think that also definitely plays a huge role in their horror films. Mm. So I just wanted to bring that up because that's something that that I think is is intrinsic in all the 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 narrative that comes out of Korea. That's interesting. Is the the fear of North Korea or whatever it, you know on a smaller level it's like hong kong and how hong kong did all these like over the top cat three movies to you know be symbolic so but well, here's I'll, the, I'll shut up I here's know. the thing for you trevor <laughs> no, no, you're good, you're good. yeah are I we love getting, it. that's good information a, yeah are we getting a sampling of their best or is this how it translates mm -hmm. in all of their movies because like you said there's just so many good films that are over in korean horror but then you mm -hmm. have is like am i getting the best of the best that we're seeing and there's probably just like the united states where we have some of the the b's and the c films out there well i mean there's more and more out there i mean if one wants to just do a quick look up the old uh tartan asia extreme uh dvd label and you will see so many korean films mm -hmm. uh like spider forest that oh, yeah. i mean just blew me away and there's oh, now i gotta see it yeah i mean the, the end i mean it's because even korea does an interesting take on the ring their version of the ring was called ring spiral mm -hmm. and, oh. and like i say it's good but it's it's definitely darker um you know eve i think honestly I mean, so korea is known for doing two uh kaiju films and one's really bad and one's really good and if you want to call it a kaiju and i do is is the host it is oh, arguably the great. best monster movie pre uh godzilla minus one in like 20 20 some years it it's amazing uh and that yet again has a, so much to do with family 
and loss, and then you get this big, crazy monster fun movie. It's it's intrinsic in their work. Uh, when did the host come out? Great. That's not the one that came out during the pandemic, did it? No, 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 no. no. This is actually it was um, uh, it was Bong, uh, the the director of Parasite. It was one of his first major films. Oh, two thousand six. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I actually uh, hosted a week showing of that film in Carlisle. Then, I, 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 I see Korea has always been on my radar because uh, there's just, I mean, okay. So we talked about Mike last week. Um, mm -hmm. Happiness of the Katakoris is a remake of a Korean film called Happy Family. So you know there is a huge long history of Korean cinema. Um, it's not as deep as Japan, but it's been around for a while, and it's uh, it, it 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 puts out some really great stuff. And as I stumbled upon today, I found they actually end up making the best soap operas in the world too. Wow, yeah, I think their supernatural cool. films are a step above what's it coming out of Japan. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like the phone. 100%. The phone is an amazing movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that in years. Mm -hmm. You said the phone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You have a little girl in there that is on the level of Dakota Fanning when she was younger. Maybe mm -hmm. a maybe even a notch above. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I'm the trying same. to think of oh. well, I think the what's all the sadness Korean? Oh yes. And yet again, we're That's dealing with a movie that potentially is the best zombie film. Yes. Since, and yes, I'm gonna say this the original remake of Dawn of the Dead. The sadness I is, agree. Uh, it, I love that you, movie. If you make a list of Korean films, the film we're talking about now needs to be on it, mm -hmm. and sadness needs to be on it. And there are a whole bunch of yeah. other ones, but um these are two that are very distinct. Oh, and of oh, course. This. Uh, Park John Wook's uh, Vengeance trilogy. Uh, yeah. So definitely in those top threes, even though they're all great films, and especially since it's the same actor that plays the serial killer, you gotta watch Old Boy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know, if you like horror and you have not delved here, like Japan, you're in for clear that calendar and sit on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think even if you want to stay in the serial killer range, you got Memories of Murder. Which is yes. based on a true story. Mm -hmm. Excellent yep. film. Tremendous drama. Like, I don't really like to watch drama that much. You have drama in real yeah. life. Why do I want to watch yeah. it on TV? But exactly. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. So good. And then they have a new serial killer movie that came out not too long ago called Midnight, which I watched. And that was, mm -hmm. yeah. Midnight. Yes. So I've heard you know, about it, but it's worth checking out. Yeah. Yeah. Think of the movie Hush or uh, Mute Witness. Mm -hmm where you have a deaf daughter and mother that's being stalked by a serial killer in South Korea. Ooh. And it, it, it plays out nicely where uh, it's a little cat and mouse game uh, that comes with some uh, little uh, tough choices for some characters in the film later on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. Might have to check that Damn, one out. Just so much out there. I really do want to just one day sit down and just fucking... Pop, uh, just Google fucking Korean horror <laughs> and oh, yeah. just fucking. Oh, I, I recommend oh. you do. There's an amazing amount of stuff out there, and a lot of it is quite good. Uh, as I mentioned, the director of the film for tonight also did Tale of Two Sisters. Amazing. And that at the time was probably the most successful globally of any Korean horror film. It was made about three years before I saw The Devil. Mm -hmm. Now, was I that one. Uh... What is that about? The uh, paranormal? Is it, um... it, it? It's a twin thing. It's one of those oh, twin okay. movies. I saw it many, many years ago. Um, it's okay. I like this better than that. So it's okay. one of those movies like where you you watch it, you may be confused coming out of it, but if you talk to somebody that uh, kind of pieces everything mm -hmm. together, and you can say, "Well, it's being told from a certain perspective," and then you like. Oh my god, that's probably the best way to describe what this one person has in the film and is the oh, way it's delivered to and us. Dave, you 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 hit the nail right on the head when it comes to any argument about why foreign horror tends to be better than US horror, at least the US horror that is made to make money. And that is layered meaning, layered symbolism 
like I, I'm totally with you there, man. I agree with that too. Right. I said that many times. I was like, I don't know what the fuck U.S. been doing, but <laughs> Korean fucking movies have been fucking way better. I've been yeah, wanting to watch that like instead of shit coming writers. out now. Yeah. Fucking it's crazy. Tough. Yeah, it's tough to get something on this level in the in the states. You know, you try to choose yeah. out maybe five or six movies that are close to any of the ones that we mentioned, and it's going to be tough to pull those out. Mm-hmm. Hang on one second. We are in Hong Kong next week, gentlemen. Ooh. Oh. With the rigor mortis movie. I'll just pop that up real quick. Boom. Traveling all the way there. Back, back in there. You should know, Mark. I don't know what that means, Trevor. Um, <laughs> don't even wait. get me started on Hong Kong cinema. So I'm excited. This is one I haven't seen. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. I'm. You know what? That makes me so happy. <laughs> what? That makes me so happy because I have another friend, my friend Matt, mm-hmm. and I love him to death, but he fucking gets on my nerves. Here's why. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. And you're probably going to be a part of this, Trevor. And if I say fuck mm-hmm. you to you, it's all out of love. Trust oh, me. I, thank you. Anytime I hit him up, I'll be like, me in the have, heart. Have you yes. seen mm-hmm. such and such movie? This fucking asshole that I love to death, like a brother. Well, his response will be, say this is the movie. He'll send me a picture of him smiling, holding the fucking Blu-ray. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen the movie. I have it. Like, you know what, man? Fuck you. <laughs> Every movie. Yeah. Every, Every movie, movie you mentioned. Movie. Mm-hmm. Like, out, out of all the... I've known him for maybe five, six years now. He collects out, hardcore out of all the movies that I've DVDs. found that I thought was just like, oh, shit. Maybe like two times I got them. <laughs> I don't remember what they were. So it's not even that fucking... But like two times... I'm just like, this... this, this yeah, is he, ha- he has everything. Thousands but I, I love it. So it's, it's like that that inside kind of friend thing. Like, a, a, one, of my, one of the episodes, one of the last episodes was me, him, and a few other guys. Anytime we mentioned a movie, he pulled the Blu-ray out. We were all just giving him the finger, like, "All right, man, this is, <laughs> this is getting that in." <laughs> but uh, it's as a, a collector, um, yeah, but that, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. it's. I love it though. I love that he mm-hmm. has that. It's just, it's just one of those things where just like, of course you have this. <laughs> well, the thing I, I do you. with people is I send them like the most extravagant poster of the movie I'm watching from wherever in the world is the most extravagant. So they oh. love seeing the, the poster art no matter what. I yeah, love so, that. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to have to hit Trevor up like, hey, what are you watching today, Trevor? What are you watching today, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I this do you, is okay. confusing enough. You should see me try streaming. And my ADHD Did, starts going. Oh, um, <laughs> by the way, Trevor, I opened up that, uh, Not, that uh, question I asked right. you to find me a movie to scare oh, me. Remember, I oh. asked you the movie to scare me. I you don't. It didn't. don't have to. I don't. I don't have to be paranormal. Any okay. movie you think that will scare me. Trevor, I suggest the Eye from Hong Kong. Oh, very good. Yeah. Oh, That's Dave, you could be on this too. You could be on in this too if you want. Hmm. That sounds All familiar. Right. The Eye. Well, yeah, there's an American remake of it that's really bad compared mm-hmm. to. Oh, the- I think I I probably seen yeah. that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might have seen that. One. The Asian version is very uh, good, very good. But my Asian goal is to find is something to scare me because no movies scare me. Any, but I yeah. still love them. Oh, I got one. Okay, I got I'm one. Yours. It's from the Philippines. It's called Incantation. Oh. Nope, Ooh. seen it. Did not scare me. Loved it though. You Loved see it. that that first 10 minutes of that movie messes with your head so much by the time it comes back up in the end of the movie, it's like, nope, I'm done. Only thing I'm going to tell you about that movie, and I said this to Aaron, the part where they're like saying that it's true and they're trying to get you to uh, repeat the mantra with them. Yep. I did not repeat it. I was like, oh, just, see, in case, you, just, just in just case, just in case, I'm not saying shit. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I'm the same way with Candyman. Yeah. And the reason why I'm the same way that oh, I'll say Candyman all day. Listen, oh, listen, 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 listen. James, I'm telling you. I'll say Bloody Mary too. Hopefully they have fucking sex. <laughs> it's different. I'm not scared of her. But Candy Candyman's different. I don't want to see no big ass black dude with a hook coming in my bathroom when I'm trying to pee. <laughs> or anything. I'll be Even scared. This Tony Todd. <laughs> the voice. The Maybe voice alone is scary. Elba. I don't know. 
<laughs> the voice Here, is scary. Here's the thing with incantation, right? If you okay. say what they're telling you to say in the beginning, it actually happens on the screen as you're watching it. Oh, yeah, wow. exactly. So you actually take control of the film as you're watching it. So if yeah. you can get past that opening, because I recommend it to a few friends and they turned it off after that. It comes up later uh, in the film where you have to do it again. It's like, nope, not doing it this time. That movie's <laughs> nope. so good. That's on that's on one of my lists. Yeah, that's on my list. That movie. Incantation. Oh yeah, I love that movie. I thought it was so cool when they did that shit. I was so like, James, damn. Yeah. Yes. So James, the question is a movie that will scare you or yeah. like mentally fuck you up. Either, or is that either, either or way, or? like either or mainly fear because it's been a long time since i was a, since i was little afraid of something i would have to like say a, i give you a triple feature of angst in a glass cage and 120 days of sodom you will bathe whoa. for the next three days after those films <laughs> and they're very well made okay you guys sent those three to in the chat i'll, I'll, so I can I'll send you trailers and you might not want to talk to me for a while <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Oh, well, I know what James is gonna be watching tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I'll be watching. We're always having trouble picking movies. I, I might, I might come back a changed man. Yep. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Or worse. <laughs> I'll be all fucked up, like. Yo, Trevor, you got any more? He's like, hooked on like it's crack. You, you, you got broke me. Movies. Hey, man. <laughs> That was good, but let me get the George Bunzo guide out, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the stuff with oh my gosh, I can't wait. Well, because I think I I think I broke myself when I was younger. So from mm. a really young age, because I used to sneak watch movies, staying up, and so I used to watch horror movies at a young age in the dark in my room by myself. Mm -hmm. So I got used to the being in the dark. All the jump scares. Mm -hmm. I started predicting how movies were going to end uh, end up, like mm -hmm. where the jump scares are going to come. I found out who the killer is going to be. I know when someone's going to die next. So all this shit came started coming to me. So mm -hmm. it ruined it for me. So I watch a movie and I'm like, nope, that's not going to scare me. Maybe if I didn't know this was coming, this will jump yeah. make me jump. But I know it's here. So What's it's been a long also? time. Because every time you find a movie, and I'm the same way, when you find a movie that figures out how to successfully break a cycle or a model, or even if it just does it slightly differently, it's such a joy. Yeah, yeah we have to go for some crappers, but we even get more joy when we find something creative. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and... That's why. That's why my goal is. I always like watching new stuff, like stuff new I've never you. seen before. Yeah, same here. Yeah, and new I, to me because I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that fucking uh, like fix. crack. I'm like, I'm getting that. I need that fix. I'm looking for that <laughs> special fix. I don't want to go repeating. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to go watch the repeat stuff. I need the new stuff, man. I need the stronger stuff. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, don't get me wrong. I still have my horror movies. That I love. To, I always love to go back and watch. Or movies in general, I love to go back and watch. But oh, I, I will. So I like, have to. I don't mind yeah. them. But I'm not going but to I am, go like. But, I'm going to no, go watch Jason today. I'm a thousand percent with you though, James. Where it's like I need, I just need to see something that I don't even say new. I'll say new to me, just because it could be no. A movie it's new to me. Yeah, it could be an old movie. Anything I never seen. Twenty twenty four. Yeah, 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 and that's another reason why I'm doing stuff like this, like the backpack on Search Thirty and stuff like with the foreign, because I love foreign horror. I know you love it too, and I know Trevor loves it as well. But I love foreign mm -hmm. horror, and this is a total treat for me. I don't get enough of it. So thank you. Oh, of course, it's shit. Me too, man. Same me here. too. And then with your knowledge of it, it's just it was it was just like. It was awesome on the guy on the whole Godzilla, which go make sure you guys go check that out over on the scene snobs. But Trevor, myself, and Mick went through every single Godzilla movie. And this guy, I don't know how. Just the knowledge from all 40 damn movies was amazing. <laughs> Impressive. ASD, ADHD, and just being a hyper fixated research person all my life. I'm going to sum that up in one word. And I there's so awesome. much more to know. 
I mean, uh, it's very flattering, but to me, I mean, I have people I know and you know, like what I know is nothing. Same, I but mean, I mean, I could say that the same thing though. Like that's how I'm looking at you. Like I know a lot about movies. I know like me and James will talk about you a lot. Like, yo, Trevor coming on here, he knows so fucking much. And, I, I, just, I just love talking about these things. So yeah. You get me on movies, music, comics, literature, but you ask them how to make toast forgot how to do that (laughs) (laughs) google it yeah google it i don't know (laughs) i need to save this space for movie knowledge yeah (laughs) it's so cool like uh, it's so cool like like, we have a co-worker shout out to you chris if you're watching um like just have you ever just sat and stood and talked to him about movies this Mm. motherfucker knows so many different movies or movie quotes i'll be looking at him like yo how the oh, yeah, hell do quotes. you remember the exact yeah. quote from this movie that you haven't seen yeah. in 15 years? And you remember the whole damn scene that you just watched it two minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I just got finished watching the movie. I already forgot what it's about. <laughs> and you remember a movie. <laughs> but, like, I, I love that people have, like, those minds to where, mm-hmm. and I'm just talking film and stuff like that because we're talking about movies, to where it's like they're so, such a fan of film to where just whatever it is, they're just locked onto it where, with, with like I said with my friend with our friend Chris he just just that just quoting movies over and over and over and over and over just and not even like the popular quotes from the movies it'll be some other shit that he just thought yeah. was hilarious <laughs> I'm just like how the whatever older man. movies like, just, too is not even the new yeah. shit that came out mm-hmm. it's like yeah. shit he's seen like 15 years and, ago and the funny thing is like he'll start with like one movie and by the end of that conversation he told you like 17 different quotes from 35 different movies and I'm like wow that is so cool that you can do that and then Trevor's knowledge of film, I'm just like, that is just so awesome. And then even more so with the foreign film, mm-hmm. I'm just like, well, listen, he's my foreign well, film. Uh, I haven't it, found it, one it, yet. It, and and the reason why I say it though, Trevor, too, is like mm-hmm. the way that you say the names of the Asian films we've done so far. And you're just, I mean, I don't know if oh, you're right or not, not, but you, and I'm not trying to be funny, <laughs> but you sound right to me. So <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you're right. I couldn't do it. I know James can't do it. And. Nah. You've seen me and Mick trying to <laughs> with the Godzilla thing, so it's it's just it's it, it fascinates me and it's so it's just so awesome. So I'm just like, well, you gotta remember this brain also will walk into a bathroom on a regular basis and forget why I'm there. Oh, so, I do that too. There are pluses and minuses to this. Guys. Listen, gotta, listen. <laughs> we, we, we all walk into rooms we don't want to be in and forget why we're there. You know what movie? You know what room you don't forget is that movie room. You go to sit down and watch a movie. <laughs> you'll find even if you get the movie that you're about to watch, you'll find something like. Yeah, fuck it, hit play. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, I was hungry and I had to pee. I'll be right back. I can't pause. This. <laughs> Cause my brain works just like that, man. If you're into something passionate about that, the movies, especially the horror stuff, oh I'm just locked in. It's like, oh man, I do gotta pee. Well, I find <laughs> that I find that in people. I may I, mm-hmm. I honestly think the best connections in life, I mean I don't do it, but if I run into somebody who is so amazingly passionate about hunting and they're just like, they light up. Yeah. I'll listen to them because Same. I'm feeding off that amazing energy that, you know, people get only in like things that they personally have mm-hmm. like this connection to. And uh, I, that's something I love about, you know, just, yeah. you know, meeting and dealing with people and working with people and like things like this discussing our shared loves mm-hmm. i'm mm-hmm. with you on that actually i'm with mm-hmm. you on that a lot and what what i do love about what you just said too is because it's like that because like i said i'm a big kid myself like all this stuff it just reminds me like not podcasting because that wasn't around way back then when we were all children but we did all sit around and talk with whoever about whatever we were into at the time basically the same damn thing we just want to hit record and maybe you had a camcorder or a talk boy hit record on that Boom, podcasting way before the word. We did it first. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> but what I was getting with that is like I love how what you were just saying, Trevor, how with anybody with that passion, it's like that childhood thing. So I'm just like, yo, go ahead. It might sound corny to somebody, but fuck it. You enjoy it. That's dope. What is mm-hmm. it? And you mm-hmm. just see them fan out or just like just like you said, their eyes light mm-hmm. up, they're smiling, they're just so excited. They're even talking faster. You might not even have, understand half the shit they're saying, but you're not going to stop them because of that excitement. You understand it because you're on the other side mm-hmm. of it talking about whatever. So it's just like, yo, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's, that's the awesome. sad part about losing video stores, right? Because that's where the conversation oh, yeah. would happen, right? Mm-hmm. 
So I am a former blockbuster person, and that's where I would have most of my conversations with customers and stuff. That's where my love of horror started. It's like Mm -hmm. you go into the horror section, you're looking at all the 80s cover art, and it's like, oh, wow, look at this. Oh, the 80s cover art is – I wish they brought that back. I love it Mm -hmm. so much. The colors, how it uh, it fucking popped out. Like every cover in the 80s you can put on a T-shirt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then you have yeah. ones for like black roses and dead pit yeah. that were three dimensional and had oh. blinking lights. Yeah, oh, I, I love mean, it. This is my as you can see, I'm a physical media person. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, but you know, I don't I mean especially when you look at the boutique labels and how they're just like literally doing like Cadillac versions of films you never thought would get respect. Um, the bad part about streaming and especially when you have things like the disney company things like that just like a baby huey plopping around Mm -hmm. like grabbing things is the license has to be used or purchased that license can just disappear Mm -hmm. it can you know go out to the lowest common denominator i love to be like everybody else but it cr- makes me cringe every time I have to deal with it not being an aspect ratio and looking like a VHS copy. Mm-hmm. And that's how much love some of those movies are ever going to get. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing saying your favorite film in five years will be available in any streaming capacity legally. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but. Well, look at Hush, right? So Hush is a mm-hmm. Netflix streaming movie yep. and they pulled it. And oh. enough people complained that they're actually releasing a physical copy mm-hmm. of it finally. But that's what happens, right? There's going to be movies that are going to disappear forever that we love because they're only available mm-hmm. on streaming. And yeah. people don't realize that they don't really own anything that they mm-hmm. purchase on a streaming mm-hmm. platform because if that platform goes away, so does your catalog. Well, if you read the small print on Kindle, they can take anything you bought away from you anytime. Yep. And that's the yeah, exact that's same concept when you buy something from iTunes also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so. I, I'm guilty of this. I <laughs> downloaded a few uh, video games on my Xbox, and mm-hmm. I didn't want to. I wanted to buy the real copy just because I'm worried about that, mm-hmm. where yeah. they can sit there and go, delete. You didn't have this game. We're, we're getting rid of this game. We're pulling it or something. Like, I like the physical form. Well, this is where podcasts like this are very important, too, because the floodgates are open. Uh, More movies and more stuff is going to come out based on the fact that everything is so easily put out. And that means the good stuff's going to be harder to find, but even more, the back catalog stuff Mm -hmm. will start getting pushed, that there will be a fairly soon generation that potentially could go, what do you mean this is a remake? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, then, that that yet again comes back into the whole joy of, you know, I, I it, it, it freaks me out when I run into people who want to put down other people's movie taste because yeah. like, no, to me that I, number one, I, I love it because they love it. Number two, that gives me an opening to go, dude, do you like this? Do take an hour and a half. Check this thing out. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to be mm-hmm. worth it. And that is pushing the button on a future uh, film lover, music lover. And that, that, that's, that's a thing about the communities of this. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Well, today's setup too, makes it where you wouldn't have killer clowns succeed today mm-hmm. because it wouldn't find its second life on physical media. It'd get yep. lost in the streaming platform because it failed in the box office. So, you know, we're going to lose a lot of great films because they may do bad in the theaters and they'll be on streaming for a little bit, but they'll go away. But that cult following will never attach to it like it did in mm-hmm. the past. Yeah. I, you know what I think they need to do with that is they, they really need to, like with the streaming stuff is, if it's going straight to streaming, I think the, the marketing needs to be better for some of those. I mean, for the ones that can afford it, of course, but it needs to be a little bit better for some of those because there's a lot of times where you go to the theater and you watch these movies and you're just like, I would this would have been I would have enjoyed this more if I would have just watched this you know watch if it just came out on Shutter for example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. instead of it coming out in theaters because it's like I came out you paid the money this that and the third which I don't mind doing all that especially if I if I enjoy the movie but it, it's one it's one of those ones where it's just like this really wasn't worth leaving the house for 
So I don't mind it with that, but mm-hmm. I, I get what you're saying, how they get lost in the sauce. But I feel like a lot of, I feel like some of it's because you're not promoting, you're not throwing it in our faces enough to where it's just like, mm-hmm. I got to see this. Cause there's a lot of times I just keep seeing movie. Like a lot of times I see a lot of these movies that are on streaming platforms besides me finally just going and looking through them is you see a movie poster, you see a movie poster, you see a movie. And I'm just like, all right, mm-hmm. why the hell am I seeing this damn mm-hmm. movie poster all the time? Because I don't watch, I skip trailers and all that. So I see people posting trailers, I skip all that. But I'm like, okay, now let me go check this movie out and, well, the studio- and make, your posters, make your posters better. It's like yeah. make them stand out. How we were talking, like, I, and I know that even physical media make it stand out. Digital media make it stand out because there's still times, like I just said, there's been times where me and James will pick movies to review just all based off of the Tubi covers of movies. Mm-hmm. It'll be just based off the covers and. Nine times out of ten, that's a terrible idea. But you know what? It brings you it, it, in a way. It it brings you back to those old school days of what you. A lot of times you have better picks, of mm. course, but you still pick some shitty movies. But of just like what we were saying, oh wow, that movie cover looks cool. I've never seen this movie before. I'm just going by this movie cover. It's a horror movie. I'm grabbing it. Uh-huh. Mm. The one that pops in my head, I was so disappointed. It's still burnt in my brain. Is that fucking okay. movie Elves? <laughs> oh gosh! That yeah, fucking cover. That cover was so cool looking. It had nothing to do with what that cover looked like. No, I no. was so fucking pissed off. But it's but again though, it made you take that risk. So they were smart. Oh, no, it did take a, yeah, smart. Mm-hmm. And that's me. the thing is, it, ma- it makes you take that risk of. Oh shit! I should check this out. Let me just click on it. And especially for streaming, because a lot of times with streaming, it's I mean, a lot of times with anything in life, when mm-hmm. you're going to pick out things, you're picking something that's going to catch your eye, catch your attention. So you guys should kind of mm-hmm. keep, seriously, be, uh, from indie up on all the way up to Hollywood and everything, keep that, don't mm-hmm. get lazy with the covers. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, one quick thing I wanted to ask Dave, too, brought about physical media. And uh, you worked at Blockbuster. You, you know, we're kind of in somewhat of the similar generations around 10 years or whatever. Um, but something that I experienced as a growing movie fan that nobody else will have nowadays. Uh, I mean, it's still stuff, you know, being discovered. But the first time you discovered Dario Argento in the United States, Lucio Fulci, Sergio Martino, any of uh, the, the, the world horror in general, it was cut versions that were put out on VHS. And if, you know, this was also back in the day in which you could try to get them via writing from the back of a magazine or going to a convention because you'd spend $20 back then on what was supposed to be the uncut Suspiria or the uncut Deep Red or uh, the uncut, uh, my personal favorite is, you know, uh, Lucio Fulci's Beyond versus the U.S. Seven Doors of Death cut. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, of course, Tim Lucas is most famous for this with Video Watchdog, but that was such a thing in movie loving is tracking down the cuts. Yeah, tape swap. We don't have that anymore because yeah. these these boutique labels are doing all that work for us, mm-hmm. and it's kind of saddening to me. Yeah, tape swapping was always great where you track down, like like you said, tracking down that stuff mm-hmm. or having that one friend's like, hey, guess what I got? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you haven't yeah, seen yeah. this yet because it's not released here. It's like, oh, okay. You know. Hey, dude, I got Meet the Feebles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking Meet the Feebles. Yeah. Oh, boy. That, oh, my God. That shit was fucking. God That's like when Record uh, first came out. Like it didn't come mm-hmm. out here right away, but it was over, available over in Spain. And it's like, hey, look, Record. It's about zombies in this building. It's like, oh, I got to check it out. I'm a little creeped mm-hmm. out from what you described it at because of the time. But yeah, we lost mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff. And then, of course, everybody slaps your hand because tape swapping was essentially almost like, you know, pirating almost because you're yeah. not paying for it. You got your friend making a copy of it because he's got a good copy and he's passing it on to you just on a smaller mm-hmm. scale. Yeah, well, it, it, it's like tape trading in the music industry, especially mm-hmm. like metal tape trading. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all part of that fandom. And the problem is, we went from literally a hand to hand situation or bag to mail situation to now things j- just live on the internet, mm-hmm. and that in itself makes it that the licenses and the copyrights are watched that much more because once it gets out, it could go a million places or it could just go two. 
where if you ha if you ended up having to send like a cease and desist letter to some guy in his apartment who made movie copies that yeah. was about it you really didn't worry about it yeah nowadays <laughs> and that's yet again another slap in collectors faces yeah because we want to mm. see the complete vision of the filmmakers it's interesting mm. that you bring that up so like trevor you know what's mm. kind of filled that gap is maybe been merchandise collecting when it comes to yeah. art because that's excitement mm -hmm. there now we have to like up oh, this is the list of your crown jewels that are out there now i gotta go and track it down and find it so the excitement shifted mm -hmm. somewhere else yeah and, uh, it's sad. Mm -hmm. it is i mean it's still it's still in the movie but i do get what you guys are saying with that as well and mm -hmm. but it's interesting to see things grow play. like analog horror mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. really exciting uh so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm not downing like internet killed horror collecting <laughs> uh I'm, no i'm not saying that there are pluses but you know yeah i'm i'm 48 i'm gonna say it i miss the old days sometimes <laughs> we all do i spent 30 dollars on a fifth generation cannibal holocaust and i'm watching it at breakfast <laughs> yes. oh man oh man yeah i missed i missed the uh, the older older times i guess i can say now too I just missed the days I didn't have to fucking pay bills. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> so much True. easier than when all you had to do was go to school or skip it. If you did that, you shouldn't do it, kids. You should go to school and get your education. But we we're degenerate. Those of us who skipped were degenerates. <laughs> I actually just Watch got something in the mail two days ago that I'm excited about. It's physical media. And it's sitting right over here at my desk. So I will bring this over. And I don't know if anybody's going to kind of... Uh, recognize what this may be from this little case here because there's a little bit of a shine on it but it is the puppet master case oh shit Too yeah long. so oh, new, new moon oh. features was running a buy one get one free sale and it's like oh my god i gotta get it because i got the uh other box that's set for free oh that's cool yeah so there's some wow. cool stuff that's still out there that's mm -hmm. awesome well i mean vinegar syndrome uh criterion severin uh all these companies and their you know whatever companies are doing such amazing i mean they're honestly taste setters mm -hmm. um it works for now and hopefully it continues mm -hmm. but you know they also understand that you know and you'll see it when they have huge sales delay okay so example a uh, wonderful old uh british horror film named reptilicus uh, I love it because it's a total piece of crap, but Vinegar Syndrome is releasing it in a box that is so amazingly colorful, and it's like a book. And does this movie deserve it? No, but I love them because they did it. Yep. That's awesome. And, you know, uh, so, you know, it's great. You know, a lot of these companies are run by amazing people, and they mm -hmm. use great minds out there, um, like uh, Kat Ellinger, um, uh, uh claire janice uh it, it, they're just amazing so yeah, there's still so much out there in the horror arena it's just i think sometimes we you know maybe it's nostalgia uh maybe it's you know we need to find a way to make these feelings happen again mm -hmm. and i don't know but yeah i think uh yeah. as older horror fans it's our responsibility to introduce the younger horror fans to this stuff mm -hmm. i know i have four kids and that's what i did we started with the classics i even got there all of them on to foreign horror films very early in their age awesome. so yep they all like that stuff and now my son my one son is looking at websites like vinegar syndrome or umbrella mm -hmm. entertainment it's like oh look at this nice mm -hmm. box that i got to get into my collection that's awesome nice that's awesome and, and that's I, what it is. You got to start off. You got to go old school with classics. Mm -hmm. Don't start off with the new shit. I'm like, oh, this is what horror movies are. Like, <laughs> you got to introduce the old shit, too. I, and honestly, I, I feel like you have to do that anyway, because one, they'll get a better appreciation. They'll get a better understanding of where a lot of these movies came from. A lot of references from these newer movies. And it's like they, they'll Original understand a lot special of effects. Mm -hmm. All that. Oh, my God. Everything. All that. All that stuff. Then they're like, yeah, I'm a horror. Like, I mean, you could say you're a horror fan, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to take that away from anybody. But then they're like, listen, I've been watching horrors from my, when my dad was a kid. And people were like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, really? Or before my dad was even bored. Like, oh, my goodness, really? Like, I didn't even know they were making movies. I was like, you know what, little kid? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great name yeah. for a, a killer children film. What? Fuck the, you, the, little. The, 
fuck you, little kids. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it would be. Holy shit. It sounds like a trauma production. You know? <laughs> it does. Bunch of killer kids in there. Rabbit grannies. Like fuck those little kids. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm watching. Yeah, I just I, I went over the. You know. I'm. I, listen. I'm still watching it, Trevor. I'm still watching it. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess with, with that though, we could. We're gonna wrap this one up. This was. This was another fun one, and yeah, we got crazy. to travel to Korea for this one. Backpack all the way to Korea, and like I said, Hong Kong next week for the rigor mortis, and I cannot wait for that. That should be another fun, fun time. And again, Trevor, take over and let the people know where they can find you and. The good stuff about Ambassador Media. Okay. Uh, so you can find me online at ambassadorradio.org. Um, it's a radio show that's syndicated, but also is online uh, most of the time, unless it's taken down, uh, that deals with the B side of music, but not the B side of music. It's the super deep, deep dive uh, in all genres. Uh, I've been doing radio uh, for oh, at least 25 years, if not longer. <clears throat> and what makes me so happy about doing the show now is that out of necessity, I found that I have to do a lot of research. And every show is, is, is just a new joy for me and stuff I don't know. Now, the media part is something we're working on in the future. Uh, and we want to expand, uh, looking at more music, film, uh, the arts in general. So that's where you can find my boring stuff. (laughs) Check it out, people. Check it out. This guy has an amazing, amazing mind. Dave, you want to tell the people one more time where they can find you as well? Sure. Uh, Nerdbox, look for the melting smiley face on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram okay. on the yeah. other social media mm-hmm. platforms. But I am most active on Facebook. I'm getting into the habit of Instagram as well, getting more active there as well. But definitely come over and check us out on YouTube. If you're a fan of Scream or Terrifier, we got 60, 70 videos just in those two mo- uh, franchises alone. And uh, right now, 1,000 Ways to Die in a Horror Movie. And then we got some other stuff coming out when it comes to Lost Horror Media soon. And we're going to introduce a last uh, a horror remake show where mm. we're going to retell something in a franchise. And I'll, I'll tell everybody here so you get to hear it first. But what if Randy survives Scream 2 and how that affects all the Ooh. films that follow? So that'll be a four-part series that'll come out. Oh, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Nice, nice. Ooh. And Ken Sagos, what's good? What's good? What's I wish you would have said something earlier, Ken. I wish you would have said yeah. something earlier. But listen, Ken, we need to talk very, very soon. Um, I need you on here, but we need to talk about some stuff, though. So, uh, yeah, I will be hitting you up very soon. <clears throat> and I'm going to just drop the end of the show links for everybody out there but listen people we're back this saturday on popcorn and pints um i know we had to push that episode back we were all busy last weekend <clears throat> and uh let's just say one of us was dealing with some vehicle vehicle issues and i almost fought my car <laughs> but i did <laughs> uh so yeah we're back we're back this saturday on popcorn and pints where we're reviewing freaky friday and the haunted, haunted mansion. Oh, cool. haunted, haunted mansion. The haunted mansion from 2003 with starring Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. And we're back tomorrow night, <clears throat> midnight, Stereo Vision, Here for Blood. Or I think that's what it's called. So, yeah. Whatever it's called, we're going to be here reviewing that at midnight. <laughs> I, I think it's Here for Blood. <laughs> so tune in for that. And yeah, again, next Thursday, Rick and Mortis. And thank you to my guests coming on. Thank you, Dave. Thank yeah, you, Trevor. Thank you, thank you time. as always, sir. And of course, my co-host James over Thank on here, you, James. over on Popcorn and Pints. But this this is this is a fun time, and I'd want to say this to people. For those of you who are into any genre of film, check out foreign. Check out the foreign genre of that. I'm gonna say foreign horror because it's amazing. There's so many awesome movies and awesome stories, and they get crazy. If you like the blood, guts, and violence, they get crazy. If you don't believe me, watch Each of the Killer. <laughs> or this or or watch i saw the devil and there's gonna be more yeah, watching back about. to back jesus yeah but I'll uh fuck with you a little bit yes yes you know come back back in with us and with that said i'll see you in your nightmares peace